welcome to Window on the Week. And today, joining me for this week's segment, please welcome Mr. Blessing Ayemere. To ensure robust governance on the ESG GPS AI tool, we've developed a strong panel of experts, both from a global and international marketplace, to augment the rating decisions. ESG GPS has rated the Nigerian listed companies and will be launching the Nigerian ratings in a few weeks' time. So watch the space. Blessing is the chairman of the Independent Ratification Committee for Nigeria and is also a member of the International Independent Ratification Committee for ESG GPS Ratings which is an overarching committee for all ratings conducted by Risk Insights. This is to ensure consistency and application of ratings is in line with countries. Blessing Ayemere is the Managing Director of Mguni Pipeline Infrastructure Limited, operating in the midstream oil and gas industry in Nigeria. He is a certified performance coach and has more than 23 years of working experience in the corporate environment. He is also president of Inspire Extra Empowerment Initiative, a not-for-profit organization focused on capacity development and leadership among youth and business executives. He is also the convener of Greatness Possibility. Blessing is a graduate of Banking and Finance from the University of Penin. He also holds a master's degree in international business management and an MSc in strategic planning from the Edinburgh Business School, Harrow Watt University. He is an alumnus of both the Lagos Business School and the Harvard Business School and also a chartered accountant. Welcome, Blessing. It is an honor to have you on the window of the week. Thank you, Anash. It's a pleasure being here today. So if we can start, Blessing, can you share with us your view on why ESG is important for Africa, in particular Nigeria? Thank you. Um, I will start by saying um, Africa is a huge market with enormous opportunity. And the continent holds great potential for return on investment for investors. Um, so it's not a continent that we can overlook. But most of the countries in the continent have discovered crude oil, like we know, and this is in commercial quantity. We have countries like Nigeria, Angola, Algeria, Ghana, and a host of others. Uh, these are high environmental and social impacting operations. So therefore, as Africa growing with a, uh, with a population of about 1.3 billion people, we play host to huge manufacturing, processing, agro-allied and other industries. These industrial activities impact the environment and create social pressure. In the past, companies have addressed these issues by setting up operational functions by the side to attend to concerns raised in these areas. That strategy did not work well and have not been sustainable. The ESG model helped to situate the importance of these environmental, social, and governance variables appropriately. And for companies that have paid the needed attention to them, they have experienced growth, profitability. And we are saying today that these companies can as well attract both global partnership and funding. So for me, I think this is one of the reasons but I will say yes, Africa is that important. Thank you, Blessing. I, I can't agree with you more. Uh, Africa plays a pivotal role in the global supply chains, and it's vital that companies uh, are paying due respect to sustainability. So is there a governance cloud with respect to uh, investing in Nigeria? Um, I will say yes, um, there is. The Nigeria environment um, has huge and good regulations, as it were. We have structures that are in place. We have regulations in different sectors. 
uh, cross, including finance, manufacturing, and of course, investing, which is most critical. The question, therefore, is are we where we should be? I don't think so, but we have made some progress. We have made some good progress in advancing um, corporate governance. We have made some good progress in advancing um, an environment that can attract the needed funding and partnership. But I think we can do more. We can begin to position ourselves. And I think the government is also trying to ensure that we have the right people in the right place. We have the right policies being driven appropriately. And we also are focused on the fact that we are not you know, operating in silos. We are operating in a global environment. We need to be able to ensure that we walk our policy and not just talk them at the current um, situation where we find ourselves. Thank you, Blessing, for that. In your opinion, what are some of the advantages of having an ESG rating for Nigerian listed companies? As we have seen uh, by doing the research with ESG GPS, that there are some very good companies that disclose very well in terms of E, S, and G. Okay. I would say that um, the advantages of um, proactively tackling ESG issues go beyond um, appeasing institutional investors and creating a good public relations story. A holistic ESG strategy will facilitate proper ESG rating, and this can open up access to large pool of capital. For a stronger corporate brand, or build a, corporate, a stronger corporate brand, um, promote sustainable long-term growth benefits as well as ensure that investors are happy. I think some of these advantages would be um, the fact that when you have good ESG rating, the company's stock um, can become more liquid. And that is because individual and institutional investors alike are going to invest their pool of funds in these companies because they feel that they are proactive in terms of governance and operations of ESG. Sustainability and impact investing is actively growing at double digit rates. Many investment firms are also incorporating ESG evaluation in their portfolio risk assessment, which is a telling indicator today that capital will continue to flow towards companies with strong ESG program and practices. And a follow-up on that is the fact that ESG rating as well, the advantage, another advantage for it, is the fact that it can unlock potential and real competitive value. You know, these are things that people have not paid attention to in the past. But companies that recognize the importance of adapting to changing social economy and environmental conditions are better able to identify strategic opportunities and meet competitive challenges. Proactive and integrated ESG policies can widen a company's competitive modes relative to other players. Executives who take steps to improve labor conditions, enhance the diversity of their team, give back to their communities, and take a stand on sustainable environmental policies. Also, these companies strengthen their brands. As millennials in particular become employees in these present days, consumers and investors, they take notes of good corporate actors and reward them with loyalty. I will also add by saying ESG rating will also draw the needed attention to social negligence, which has resulted in social unrest. Activists are you, have used rather governance weaknesses as a tool in prosy contests and campaign against companies for years. We have had situations where you know, activists target companies' management because they know that they are not doing the things that they should do, especially with respect to environment and social. So companies that proactively address ESG 
can set the bar for entire industry and at the same time help immunize themselves against activist intervention. Let me also add that ESG rating will also help company to attract value and retain the best talent because you have the S in the ESG and that S is where people need to pay more attention. We have a few companies paying attention to the E and some paying attention to the, uh, to the G. But the S is something that is very critical. And millennials care deeply that the companies they work for and the business they support embrace values that are aligned with their own. The environmental and social responsibility are very important to them. Employees who are passionate about the organization are loyal and who feel valued, driven, or who feel valued are driven rather as you know, they see the opportunity to strengthen brand of companies and improve the overall productivity of the workforce. I think these are a few advantages. There are more that we can talk about, but these are clear advantages that a company that is focused on ESG will begin to attract and also expand where they already attract them. Thank you, Blessing. Some excellent points encapsulated in your summary there. Uh, touching on the point of competitive advantage in terms of uh, ESG, but also uh, touching on all stakeholders, especially employees um, and also uh, communities. Joining the Risk Insights IRC, can you comment on the governance of ESG GPS rating tool and what is the strategic imperative for Africa to adopt ESG rating tools in companies? Um, I would say the ESG GPS tool from my assessment um, has a very strong governance in place. Um, from what I have seen, um, this is robust, this is detailed, and um, I think um, care and attention has been paid to some of those very key variables. This range from the risk inside leadership made up of people with hands-on experience in company rating, data scientists and the independence built into the process. I also know that the tool has a robust data collection procedure, rigorous and detailed analytics by experienced and committed people in the system. The tool also, from what I have assessed and seen, uses artificial intelligence to capture relevant legislation and news, um, bring out these new fields from local and international agencies, ensuring alignment. These are, these are a few things that I have gone through and I see that, yes, the tool is robust. And in terms of governance, I also know that the issue of delegation and authorization has been addressed carefully and the involvement or the inclusion of the independent ratification committee that come in to look at the non-financial factors, the issue of leadership in bringing their expert judgments to look at you know, the balance between what the AI and the ML2 has done uh, and those other variables that need to you know, be synchronized. Um, I will say that Africa is developing fast and the rate of population growth is projected to, to be very high. I think we need a tool like this that can begin to draw attention to those things that are critical. And the ESG GPS tool that I see, I think addresses those very variables that are important and especially the issue of governance. Thank you, Blessing. Um... We do take great care and effort in terms of our governance processes and ensuring quality control in terms of all the data that is captured. So Blessing, moving on, do you think that ESG disclosure is improving in Nigeria? And maybe comment on the oil and gas sector, which has been impacted largely on disclosure from environmental metrics. And do you think Nigeria is ready for this? Absolutely, it is improving 
But I think there is also huge room for improvements more than what we currently have. We can accelerate the process. We can also ensure that um, we recognize the urgency that is required. We are improving um, compared to where we were yesterday. But the question is, are we running fast enough? I think we can do better. The African mm. market is peculiar. It needs unique challenges. And, and that from time to time, you know, the cloud, the operators in various sectors. When it comes to the oil and gas, I think they are even among those that are leading when it comes to ESG. But they focus more on the E and the S, which is environment and the social. And the reason is very clear. The oil and gas operation directly impacts the environment. And of course, because of the issues of trust, you know, and the collaborative gap that have existed, we have the issue of social pressure coming up at various operating angles. So what you have today is um, an industry that is focusing more on environmental issues, driven by the regulators. And as well, we have the issue of social um, unrest that they are addressing. And it must be very clear that addressing the social issues has become the license to operate in this environment. So I think that more work can be done, but we have actually made progress beyond where we are, you know, um, in the past. Thank you, Blessing, for that comprehensive answer. Uh, we all live on the same planet and we want to protect humanity's assets by holding on to companies that are accountable and assisting with the change in this new governance era. I know you believe in ESG, but do you think it is important for us to hold hands as Africans on this? And if we look at the ratings for ESG on Africa, it is quite limited. How can we change this? You are right, Sir Anish. We live in the same planet and we do need to hold hands. To achieve this, we need to educate more leaders and by extension, corporations and directors on the need to prioritize ESG. The importance is enormous. We have led profitable businesses in the past, businesses that could not stand the rigor of sustainability. We must now focus on building and leading businesses that will last decades and centuries and remain sustainable beyond the generations of the founders and the original promoters. This is where we will say we are making the right progress. We must also be upfront in showcasing the value and benefit of ESG and ESG compliance entities to the public. The strategic place they occupy in positioning for global partnership and expansion, as well as the ability to rank high as investment destination. We must show and tell the positive impact of embracing ESG strategy. And we must be very upfront in communicating this as well to the people. Thank you, Blessing, for those powerful words. It was a pleasure having you on Window on the Week. The Risk Insights IRC consists of global experts and thought leaders that have a wealth of experience in the facets of ESG and business sustainability. Risk Insights is excited to be launching ratings in Nigeria and Kenya in the first half of this year with our coalition partners Instinctive. This will provide a platform for these rest of Africa markets to demonstrate company sustainability through ESG ratings. I am Anesh Pillay, Acting CEO of Risk Insights, and thank you for joining us for this episode of Wind on the Week. We look forward to seeing you next week. Stay safe.